Hey guys, my name is Mackenzie and welcome back to my channel. It is the end of the month, which means it is time for my monthly reading wrap up. So in today's video, I'm going to be talking about all the books I read in June and books that are on my July TBR. So let's just hop right into the video. June was such a busy month for me. I only read eight books and that's pretty low. I normally read about 10 books a month. I wasn't even in a book slump, I just didn't have time to read and I feel like sometimes that's worse than even being in a book slump because all I wanted to do was read books but I just couldn't find the time to sit down and actually read. I am a full-time girly and work was just so busy in June and then I decided to become a foster parent to four kittens and it's been a lot of fun but they definitely drive me insane. And then at the end of the month I got invited to the summer, I turned pretty premiere in New York City and I got to watch the trailer for the first time. I did vlog it so stay tuned for that video because that will be going up soon. Even though I didn't have a lot of time to read in June, I still managed to read some really good books. So let's get into the eight books that I read in June. I know they normally say to save the best for last but I'm going to start with this book first because it was my favorite book of the month and it has not left my mind since I finished reading it. And that book is Divine Rivals by Rebecca Ross. And guys, like, I loved this book so, so much. This is a young adult fantasy novel about two young rival journalists who find love through a magical connection while a war is going on among the gods. This book seriously has everything. It has workplace rivals to enemies to lovers, war gods, a magical typewriter, which was my favorite part because the two main characters write letters to each other through this magical typewriter. This is so beautifully written and it's one of those books where you're just going to get lost inside the world and it literally feels like you're inside the book right next to the characters. The second I finished this book, I just wanted to flip to the first page and start reading all over again. It's so difficult to describe this book without giving away any spoilers, but I just loved the main characters, Iris and Roman, so much. Like, they might be my new favorite book couple. The book does end on a cliffhanger, but there is going to be a second book coming out and I cannot wait to read that book. I'm going to say this now, but this is definitely going to be the next book that gets hyped on BookTok and Bookstagram and it deserves all the hype because this book was so good. Like the quotes and the world and the characters are just, just chef's kiss. Like I can't recommend this book enough and it is now my like mission to make sure that everyone reads this book. It was my favorite book that I read in June and probably one of my favorite books of the year so far. So go pick this up right now, like read it right now. Stop everything and read this book right now. I cannot recommend it enough. After finishing Divine Rivals, I was in a huge book hangover. So I wanted to pick up something light and easy to read and I found this book on Kindle. And to be honest, one of the only reasons I picked up this book is because of the title. And this book is called Call It What You Want. And if you're a Swifty, then you would know that Call It What You Want is a song by Taylor Swift from her album Reputation. And Reputation is one of my favorite albums. I had no idea what this book was about, but as soon as I saw the title, I knew that I had to read it. This story follows a girl in college who falls in love with this guy, but he won't commit to her. Like he's kind of afraid of relationships. He's just like, yeah, like I don't do relationships. So she's basically in a long situationship with this guy. This book was really short. I was able to finish it in a day. I think it's under 200 pages. I thought this book was okay. It was relatable, but I also found it pretty forgettable. Like I can't remember some parts that happened. As the author's debut novel, this definitely could have used some editing. I feel like some of the sentences didn't flow and some of the words were misspelled. The ending felt unfinished and rushed, but I did really enjoy all of the Taylor Swift references in this book. I ended up giving this a three stars, even though it was more like a 2.5, but I was feeling a little bit generous that day, especially since it was the author's first novel. This was just an easy read, and if you're a Swifty, then I would recommend reading it. The third book that I read in June is called Cleopatra and Frankenstein. This has been on my TBR forever, and I finally got it around to reading it this month. This cover is probably one of my favorites that I own. I love the blue and pink combination, and this portrait of the woman on the front is stunning. I like that it is a painting, and it looks like it was done by an artist. This is a modern contemporary fiction book and it takes place in New York City. This follows Cleo and Frank who meet on New Year's Eve. The second they meet, they hit it off like right away. There is an age gap between them, which I didn't mind too much. Normally I hate reading about age gaps. 
and in this one it was kind of funny because you can definitely tell the differences in their ages since Cleo's visa is expiring soon because she is from the UK, they decide to get married after a couple months of dating so she can stay in New York. Their marriage was toxic from the beginning. Like, you can just tell that these people were not made for each other, but at the same time, you're kind of rooting for them. I really enjoyed this book and I was shocked to find out that this is the author's first novel and I would definitely be picking up more books by her. I really liked the writing. There was a lot of figurative language and everything was just so descriptive. But my favorite part about this book were the side characters. They were just so unhinged and messy. This definitely is not a romance book, so don't go into it thinking that it is. But if you love like unhinged or messy characters, then I would definitely recommend reading this book. And I gave this four stars. Each month I try to read at least one thriller because I feel like thrillers are easy to read. Most of them are fast paced, so they help me stay out of a book slump. And this month I decided to pick up two thrillers. The first thriller I read this month is called Hidden Pictures. This is about a young girl, I believe she's in her 20s, and she's trying to restart her life after overcoming a drug addiction. She ends up finding a job as a nanny for this rich couple to watch their only son. I believe he is four or five years old. As the girl is babysitting for this family, strange things start to happen, and the child that she is watching, he draws pictures, but they're not like normal pictures that a four-year-old should be drawing. They're dark images, and some of the pictures include a woman being murdered and like strangled so the girl is just like oh my gosh like what is going on is your child possessed and she starts believing that maybe someone was murdered in this family's home so she's trying to get to the bottom of what happened and she wants to know why this kid is drawing these really dark images i had such high hopes for this book i feel like the storyline could have been done so well but for me the execution fell a little flat i felt like the book was repetitive at times and then it also felt like nothing was really happening until the end of the book and it took me a while to get into it, but the one thing i did like was that the book actually includes the drawings so while you're reading it you're just like flipping through and you're seeing these images and you're just like oh my gosh like definitely do not read this book at night because it will keep you up this book also takes place in south jersey which i found really cool because i live in south jersey and i never find books that actually take place close to where i live so that was pretty cool to read about and i ended up giving this 3.5 stars i would still recommend it because i feel like a lot of people would really enjoy this book the next thriller i decided to read is called don't let her stay i decided to pick this up after seeing it a lot on book talk and it had really high ratings on goodreads this is a domestic thriller about a woman who recently married a rich man i there's like an age gap i think she's 20 and he might be in his like 40s or 50 or whatever but they're basically having like this perfect life like he's rich and now she has like this money and this beautiful home and they have a brand new daughter their life is perfect until the husband's other daughter shows up to live with them and her daughter is close in age with the wife i think the daughter is like also 20 years old the wife is convinced that her husband's daughter is evil and is trying to kill them the beginning of the book really grabbed my attention but i found the ending very predictable and anytime i can predict the ending of a book i will automatically take away a star from my ratings so i gave this book three stars i know a lot of people enjoyed this book i didn't love it as much but if you're looking for a fast-paced thriller to just get through then i would recommend reading this so after reading the thrillers i decided to enter my cowgirl romance era and i picked up this book called done and dusted i was seeing it all over bookstagram so i was like okay i have to find out what the hype is and i feel like i'm the only person that hasn't read the flawless series yet so if you've read those books let me know if i should read them and start the series done and dusted is a cowboy romance and it has the trope forbidden love because the girl's love interest is her brother's best friend and this was just like an easy cute read like i feel like sometimes you just need those books that aren't too heavy and they are just easy to get through. I enjoyed this book. I really like the small town vibes and it kind of reminded me of Miley Stewart in Hannah Montana because they're on a ranch and the characters in this book are riding horses and for some reason that just made me think of Miley Cyrus. Like, I don't know why. I'm actually excited for the next book because I believe it follows the girl's best friend and her other brother. And I believe that's going to be like an enemies to lovers. So I'm really excited for that one. It was my first time reading a cowboy romance and I definitely will be reading more. And I gave this book 3.5 stars. Since June was Pride Month, I really wanted to read a book that had LGBTQ representation. So the next book I decided to read is called Swimming in the Dark. Set in the early 1980s in Poland against the violent decline of communism, this is a tender and passionate story of first love between two young men who find themselves on the opposite sides of the political divide. 
I haven't seen a lot of people talk about this book, but it was so beautifully written and poetic. It kind of reminded me of the books Call Me By Your Name and My Policeman, which I really love those books. So if you also like those books, then I would just suggest reading this. As someone who is Polish, I found this really fun to read and to learn about the history of Poland. I ended up giving this four stars. I really enjoyed it. Also, the book is really short. I think it's under 180 pages and you can definitely finish this in a day. The eighth and final book that I read in June, I am so excited to talk about because I received an ARC of this book. And if you don't know, an ARC is basically an advanced reader copy that authors and publishers will send out to readers to kind of try to get more hype around the book and get the word out before the book comes out. That way people will be interested in buying it. And I just can't believe I received an ARC from the author herself because she's one of my favorite authors. And the book is called In the Likely Event by Rebecca Yaros. You have probably heard of this author or seen her name before because she's been getting a lot of hype recently for her other book called Fourth Wing. And if you haven't read this book yet, like this book has been all over BookTok and Bookstagram, but it deserves all the hype because it was so good and I highly recommend reading this. But what a lot of people don't know is that she actually writes a lot of books with romances that involve war and Fourth Wing is actually her first fantasy book and for it to be her first fantasy book and to be that good is just insane like I can't wait for the second book to come out already but here are some of her romances that she has written and The Things We Leave Unfinished is my favorite book by her and one of my favorite books of all time like I cannot recommend this book enough and then the other book I have of hers is called The Last Letter I haven't read this yet but I heard it's really sad so I'm really excited to read this and this book right here is her newest release and I just love the cover of this it is a romance war novel. This follows Izzy and Nate who meet on a plane and they kind of hit it off right away. Like the chemistry is undeniable, but only a couple seconds after takeoff, the plane ends up crashing in the Missouri River. After the plane crash throughout the years, fate keeps bringing Nate and Izzy back together again as they always end up in the same place at the same time. But because Nate has a career in the military and Izzy has a job in politics, the timing for them to date is never right. They have a huge falling out, but one year their paths cross again in Afghanistan during the war when Nate is given the task to protect Izzy's life. I really enjoyed this book. The first 10 pages when the plane is going down, I literally got chills up my arm. It reminded me of the show Lost. I didn't mind the dual timelines and I really enjoyed that we got both point of views from each of the characters. You can definitely tell that the characters had a lot of chemistry and what I love about Rebecca Yaris's books is that she always ends up including some sort of plot twist and there was one in this book that I didn't see coming. I rated this 4.5 stars. It was so close to being 5 stars. There's just some parts of the book that I didn't love but I definitely recommend this book. It's going to pull at your heart and your emotions and will probably have you crying towards the end of the book. Also, I think it just came out on Kindle Unlimited, so you can read it now. So those are all the books that I read in June, so now it's time to talk about my July TBR. And for me personally, I am such a mood reader, so I find it really difficult to stick to a TBR. But here are just some books that I hope to read in July. I can't believe it's already July, like summer is almost over, and I've barely read any summer books this year. So the first couple of books I have on my July TBR are all summer books. So the first book that I have on my July TBR, it's called The Five Star Weekend by Elaine Hildebrand. And I feel like she's just the queen of summer. And each summer I try to read one of her books. So this is the first one that I'm hoping to read in July. This next book the author actually sent me, and this is called Bad Summer People. I feel like this is going to be the perfect domestic thriller to read for the summer. And like I said before, I try to read at least one thriller every month. So this is the thriller that I'm going to try to read in July. This next book was on my June TBR, but I didn't get around to reading it, and that is called Seven Days in June. Like, guys, like, just by the title, I feel like I really should have read this in June, but I'm going to try to read it in July. I got about 30 pages into the book and just put it down. I couldn't really get into the story. So if you read this book, let me know your thoughts and let me know if I should continue reading it. In July, I also really want to read One Italian Summer. I feel like everyone's going to Europe this summer besides me because I am broke. So I really hope that this book will transport me to Italy and I can pretend that I'm just having an Italian summer. This next book on my TBR, I think everyone has read it besides me. It is so hyped right now and so popular. And that is Happy Place by Emily Henry. I'm a huge Emily Henry stan, but one of the reasons I haven't read this book yet is because it only came out in hardcover and I told myself I wasn't going to buy it until it came out in paperback, but after seeing everyone read it and give it such high ratings, I was like, okay, 
I'm just going to buy it. I'm low-key kind of scared and intimidated to read this because I'm afraid I'm not going to like it, but I really need to read it soon so I can see what all the hype is about. Sorry if the lighting changed, it got really dark out because it is about to storm, but the last two books on my July TBR are called The Last Letter by Rebecca Yaros and Once Upon a Broken Heart. I've been wanting to read this book for a while and I'm so happy I got my hands on this cover because it is absolutely stunning. This is from Book Depository. Sadly, they closed, but I'm really excited to read this. I've been wanting to read it for a long time. So those are all the books that I read in June and books that are on my July TBR. Let me know what books you're looking forward to reading this month. Be on the lookout for my New York City vlog that I will be posting soon. I also have another book haul coming up because I can't stop buying books. As always, be sure to follow me on my social media. I also just made a thread account because everyone's on there now and I just had to hop on the trend. But thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye! Thank you.